Praise the Lord. So this group of people in the book of Revelation, the Bible said that they're going to sing a new song. What is a song? It is a what? It's your experience. It's what you've been through. That's why Dolly Parton can sing a coat of many colors. Why? She wore that coat of many colors. She wrote a song from her experience. And you and I are writing a new song that no man can sing but the bride. When we stand before Yahshua and Yahweh on that great day, the Bible said that there, we will sing a song that no other man can sing. Or in other words, it's not that we're going to be standing there singing, okay? But rather, we will have an experience with God that the rest of mainstream Christianity had no desire for. It didn't make us any better than them. It made them no worse than us. It didn't make us big I or little you. It's simply you get what you give. And for those that are willing to give all, they will get all. And now, whenever we learn this song, we went to the Song of Songs to learn the song. And we've watched a young girl that started off Scared to death to give it all up for God. Remember, he came to her as a deer. And she was standing behind the lattice. She didn't know him. But he wanted to know her. And he lured her away. And then she changed her mind and went back to mama's house. Which is who is mama's house? The church. Your religions that you came out of. You're always comfortable at mama's house. Do y'all know why we like wearing pajamas? Because the minute I go to button a shirt like this, I get reminded of the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we like pajamas because they don't have to fit. Ain't nobody hearing what I'm saying. We like no accountability. Pajamas, there's no accountability. You just put them on. You can gain 10 more pounds, they'll stretch right with you. Amen? But when you go to button up this one, it says, dude. <laughs> dude. <laughs> Son, you're not quite there yet. It is a measuring is what it is. When you come under the word, it measures you. Have you ever got uncomfortable listening to the preaching? That's the measuring. And you don't have to wear. You can live in pajamas. You just can't never be nothing. We all like to get in our pajamas, but you're never going to succeed in your pajamas. You've got to present yourself to the world. You've got to measure yourself. And the Word measures us. And He's measuring this girl, the Shulamite woman. As he measures her, she grows from a young girl that's so immature, just like you were when you started learning this song. She was, she was in it for what she could get out of it. She was serving the Lord to go to heaven, to get her mansion. That was it. That was her experience. But when he said, would you like more than heaven? Would you like more than a street of gold? How would you like a heart of gold? Would you like more? Then follow me to Mount Beshear. Let me take you away from all that you're comfortable with. Do you know why people want to go back to the churches they came out of? They know what to expect in those churches. They're comfortable there. They know what the preacher's going to preach before he says another word. They've heard it a thousand times. When you come to a ministry like this and you're like, God, what's he going to say next? You don't know, right? Because there's a measuring coming out. It's saying you got to come higher now. You thought, I love when people say, well, I'm glad I learned this message. You ain't learned no message. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm glad I know this message. I don't even know this message. This message consumes my life. Every day that I wake up, more and more and more. So this woman is growing. And, all, and you've seen all that she's, she went to Solomon's bed. You've seen her in the Valley of Nuts. 
You've seen her all through. So now we're coming to the eighth chapter. Amen. The last chapter. This is her new beginning. Amen. And that's where we're going to wind up on the last great day, the eighth day of the feast. And this is where she is. She, I'm going to show you tonight where she is coming into the Feast of Tabernacles, the last great day. Amen. Let's read chapter 8 and verse 1. That was enough to go home on. Mm -mm. Hallelujah. Now this is her talking to him. She says, oh, that you were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss you, and I would not be despised. Now most people read that verse, and they just keep right on reading. No idea of the gold in that verse. But as I was studying it, the Lord began to reveal it. And I want to reveal to you tonight. Let's read it again. Oh, that thou were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss you. Yea, and I would not be despised. You may be seated tonight. What in the world does that mean? Well, it means a lot. By now, this little Shulamite woman has fallen in love. we got a lot of buzzing. I don't know if maybe it's, it's pretty bad, but we need to get that checked out after the service. She said, um, I've fallen in love with a man that I didn't even want to leave Mama's house with. By this time, by the time she gets to chapter 8, she has gone through all of the emotions of the journey. Remember, she started out wishy-washy. You'll do the same thing. Anyone that ever hears my message that I preach, you will. here's how it will go. The first time you hear it, wow. Never heard nothing like it. Oh, this is the way of truth. Until Christmas rolls around. Or until they put catfish out on the plate. Or until... You, it begins to alter your relationships with your family and your friends. And until it begins to get uncomfortable. Because that's what happened to this girl. I'm showing you her story, her song. And so she put her foot out behind the lattice and then run back because she saw, she knew what she was looking at was the truth. But she wasn't ready to follow the truth. That's why you'll sing a song that they can't sing. Because you were willing to leave mama's house. You were willing to hear the truth and then buy the truth. See, that's a difference. Hearing truth, the Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. Sister Holly, that, what that means is this. Hearing the truth is free. You can just come to Zoom and hear the truth. But when you decide to buy it and own it, own it. When you decide to bring it home with you, when you decide to eat the book, when you decide to buy it and say, I'm all in, that is when you have moved beyond the veil. And that's when the next step is this. Once you say, you know what? I've listened to him preach. I can't, I've, 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 I, it's truth. And once you realize that, the next thing he's going to do is call you out to Mount Beshear. And guess what? When you get out to Mount Beshear, ain't nobody going to be there that you know. It's just you in truth. When you get out there, that's when you can't run back to mom. He brought you too far. Now you're so messed up. You look back, mama don't even want you back. Because she's afraid you're going to tell all the sisters what you learned at Mount Bashir and mess the whole family up. Right. Amen. Amen? I don't have no witnesses here tonight. 
But when you go out there with the Lord and he begins to reveal this word to you, the Bible said if you don't love that more than mother or father, brother or sister, then you're not worthy of it. And it don't mean you're lost. don't mean you're going to hell. But you can't sing this song that I've sung. This song cost me everybody I knew. This song has cost me everything I love. This song has taken away everything that was taking me away from him. that every one of you are going through until she finally while she was out at Mount, out Mount Bashir the Bible said she found the bed of Solomon she began to know him as more than King Solomon but she began to know him as the lover of her soul the relationship me and him him and me and when you get to the point, I, when people tell me I, these commandments are hard, you know what that tells me? That tells me you don't know the commandment giver. Because if you know him, you know he gives nothing too hard for any of us to bear. Nothing. He only, it's just like my wife and I. There's some commandments in my home. I didn't write them. They were there when I got there. One of the commandments is when I first wake up, don't talk to me. I need an hour. I need an hour. I've got to go, you know. I got, in other words, and if you do make the mistake, you won't make it again. <laughs> That's a commandment in our home. We just sort of wake up. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. I head for the toothbrush. She heads for whatever she does. And an hour later, we come slipping out of our sides of the house, headed to the kitchen. Hey, baby, good morning. Now, now if I would have known about that commandment, before I fell in love with her, if she'd have said, "Now don't talk," I, I thought, "Well, that's nope, that's her." Amen, Pastor. That's her. Here's another commandment in our house. It was there when I got there. When that sun goes down, you go down. I'm a night owl. She's not. About eight thirty, nine o'clock at night. She's turning on. Uh, Elvira, not Elvira, um, <laughs> Delilah, what's the girl on, on Pandora? Pandora, getting the music just right. Yeah. Spa music. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in my office with a, with a choir going, God, it's good. Yes, yeah, see it at 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, because I just go all night long, right? But because I love her, that commandment's not hard. I gladly find my way around it. Right. Amen. Amen. Because of love. And when I know what he loves, I grow into loving that. That's called a relationship. That's a song that most believers cannot sing. So by the time we get to chapter 8, she's so in love with him. She has such prayer meetings with him. Such intimacy with him you know my, my grandmother's gone but I never used to and I used to think my grandma had mental problems I did when I was young I thought my grandma had Tourette's or something she'd be walking through the house oh she would Imagine being a child coming out. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over the house. When nobody was looking, she's her and the Holy Ghost is having a relationship. Amen. She and, and then we'll be riding down the road, and all of a sudden she'll go to speaking in tongues, driving down the road. And I'm like, my God, shut up. And and it was a it was a continuous intimacy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And if you wanted to get aggravated, be around my grandmother and have a problem that you need an answer to. There was no answer. Well, let's just pray about it. I didn't want to pray about it. I wanted an answer. Prayer was everything to her. She, she had come into a place of total dependence on God. Total intimacy. He was her life. She bought that truth. Did you hear me? She bought it. She, she allowed a husband to leave her over that truth. They were pastoring in New Orleans, right down the road from here. He had given her 10 children. She was in her 30s with 10 children. And she was a minister. He was a minister. And they built the church that's still going in New Orleans. And one day, he leaves with the piano player of the church and stayed gone, come back. She took him back. He left again. She took him back. The whole time, the church is seeing all of this, and she, she takes him back. But see, she, she wouldn't do what he liked to do. He liked to go to the casinos, and he liked to, you know, party. He liked to go and, and do, you know, and she was sold out. She was sold out to holiness. She was completely sold out to what she believed. And she loved him. She gave him 10 babies. She loved him. But there was something she loved more. And it was truth. And it was God. And one day, I wasn't there, but all my mother and everyone has told me he came. He was leaving for the last time. And he was leaving out the driveway. And my grandma grabbed the car door saying, Roy, don't leave. Please don't leave. And he drug her down the road holding on to that door, begging him not to leave her with 10 children with no income. Back then they didn't pay child support. No income whatsoever. And I wasn't there, Sister Pat, when she had to lean on the Lord. I wasn't there, so therefore I couldn't understand 30 years later. Oh, I love you, Lord, all day long. Oh, I love you, Lord. From night, from the moment, oh, I bless your name, Lord. See, I wasn't there when she fell in love with him. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I wasn't there. I didn't see how she had to depend on him. And it created a love affair between her and her God. Amen. You got to buy this truth. I said, you got to buy it. Amen. You can't just hear it. You got to buy it. You got to own it until it owns you. Yes, and this woman in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1, has gotten to that point. Yes, and I told you all about my grandmother to show you what verse 1 means. She said, oh, read it for me, Elder Connolly. If only you were to me like a brother. I just wish... I wish you was my brother. Why? Because since you're not my brother, I can't love on you in public like I'd like to. But if you was my brother, little baby brother, I could just kiss on you all over town and I'd never be despised for doing it. Nobody would ever think what's wrong with her. I just wish you was like my little, I, I wish you could maybe a little baby and I just, I just kiss you all the time. Nobody would think nothing about it. I just wish you was a little brother. And that way, my grandma would do all her talking to the Lord in the car, in the house. But when you get to Walmart, you can't really do it. And she had gotten to a place in her relationship with God to where this became such an intimate relationship that she almost couldn't be around the world because it would slip out of her. Her hallelujahs would slip out everywhere she walked. So all of a sudden, it, this and, and the people standing around like, okay, oh yeah, bless Yahweh. Okay, all right, whatever you say. In other words, it's slipping out. Yes, you can't hide it. You can't hide it. This woman had gotten there where everything she did was out of love for him. And she said, I just wish that you was my baby brother. And then you and I could be on my job and I could love on you. And nobody would say what's wrong with her. She's weird. She said they, would, they wouldn't despise me if you was a baby. That's how much I love you. 
that I just want to be, I want to talk to you. I want to walk around and I would do it, except everybody would think I'm talking to myself and they'd commit me. Anybody hearing me? That's where you got to get to, to where you have such a relationship with the Lord that you, 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 the public almost becomes a place you don't even know how to operate in. Now, why? I want you to learn a lesson from this woman. Here's the lesson. She had wisdom with her passion. That's part of the song you got to learn. Now, let me teach you something. When you're around people that don't know the name Yahweh, then you may have to call him God. Else they will think you, they will despise you. I'm trying to tell you, I'm teaching you a lesson. This woman said, I want to tell the whole world what I know. I want to get on Facebook and tell everything I know. And I want to, I just want it to pour out. But she said, I know that I'm a mature bride and I can't just bust up at the Christmas party and tear down the tree. Oh, Pastor, that's right. Amen. Hurt her free, hurt his friends. I'm trying to help you tonight. Yes, sir. She said, but now if you was my little brother, right. it'd be different. But I just can't go around people expressing our private relationship in front of the public. Have you ever seen a husband and wife? It's okay to do a little peck on the cheek. And a little, but have you ever seen some people that just like you? Like, please, that's a, a come on now. Yeah. Get a room. Get a room. Right? That's what people think of us when we're so spiritual Come on, Pastor. Come on. that we can't communicate with them in a human way. We want to bring our private yes, relationship and demand it upon the public. Do that. And they will despise you. That you can't draw them to the Lord when you're sitting there telling them how wrong they are for the way they're doing it. This woman's teaching y'all a lesson. If you were a baby brother, I could get by with this. But I can't bring you out to the public the way I love you in private. In here, do it all you want. Crawl in the floor, love him, roll, whatever you want to do in here. We ain't going to tell nobody how crazy you are. <laughs> You're safe in here. But Paul says, if a visitor walks in, yeah. right. see what he, yeah. Paul was telling you. Paul said, I'm not going to forbid you to speak in tongues. He said, but if a visitor walks, that's an intimate relationship with you and God. But he said, when a visitor walks in, you need to calm it down. Or they'll despise you. I don't, I don't feel like nobody's really hearing me. Okay, I want you to follow what I'm trying to teach you. Whatever you believe, believe it with all your heart. But the moment you throw it in somebody else's face, they'll despise you for it. You've got to learn how to love in private and how to live in public. You've got to learn the people on your job, don't they're not trying to have you tell them who Yahweh is. They don't even want to know the name or Yahshua or whatever. In other words, the more you force it on them, the more they despise you. For example, I speak in tongues in this church all the time. You don't hear me do it on my Toto show. I pull the mic away. Why don't I do that? They'll despise me. They don't know what that's all about. They don't understand that level. Of relationship. What do you mean you go to church for four hours? Don't even tell people y'all go to church for four hours. If you don't want nobody to come, tell them we stay in here for four hours. They'll never come. 
They don't understand that level. They don't desire that level. That's not your problem. This woman said, but if you was my brother, I could just kiss on you in front of everybody. But I got to leave it in the bedroom. I got to leave it in the church. When you meet somebody that don't understand the Sabbath day, shut up about their Sunday worship. It's not your place. This is not their walk. Now, if now if they ask you, that's totally different. But you cannot go out and condemn your families. You can't go for Easter lunch and there's ham on the plate and say, get behind me, Satan. You're going to make your mama mad at you. Right. That's right. You don't want mama mad at you. Uh-uh. So when I go in for Easter, my mama, that she's known for her ham. For visitors, I'm so sorry, but we try to eat a biblical diet around here. We try not to eat unclean animals, but just so you know what I'm talking about. That's see what I'm talking about, visitors, see what I'm saying. They don't understand. And so therefore, whenever I go in my mama's house, you know what I do? She don't even know I hadn't eaten no ham. That's right, Pastor. Amy. I eat everything around that ham, right. and I, my plate's so high covered with everything else, the ham she thinks is just under there somewhere. Right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 You, 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 you can't bring your relationship in the public. Now, you can live the life that you live in the public, but you can't go around always when you meet somebody want to prophesy over them. And, you know, if you're in Walmart, which you shouldn't be, but if you are... I hate that place because they hate my president. Yes, but nevertheless, whenever you go in and somebody says, if somebody ever said, would you pray with me? Well, you ain't got to. Almighty Yahweh, you touch it right now. <laughs> it ain't time for that. Wait till you get to church and we'll knock you out. Hallelujah. Take their hand and say, Lord, bless, bless them. Bless them, Lord. Right yes, away. Father. Yes. You'll get as much done just like that. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 A lot of people wonder why I don't preach some of the things that y'all know that I believe in public. There's a reason. There's a reason. I don't cast my pearls before swine. The Bible said this is precious truth. Don't throw it out to people that's going to mock you so bad over it that it hurts your feelings and gets you to wondering. Leave it to yourself. Hold it to yourself. Now if they say, are you going to church tomorrow and tomorrow Sunday? Say, no, I go on the Sabbath day. And they're going about your business. And now if they say, hold on, come here. What would you say? Uh Uh-oh, now. See, now the door's opening. I've come to teach you tonight how to take a private relationship. And there's some things you keep in the church. Okay? The Apostle Paul said if you're speaking in tongues and there's a visitor there, there must be an interpretation. Why? They'll despise you. Paul said they'll think you're mad. That's why that's why many times the Bible said when Yahshua would pray for people, he would take them away Amen, and pray for them. Amen. This is private revelations that we have been given from the Lord. And we must know that he's not our little brother. We can't, we can't just kiss on him in front of public. When I go preach it, do y'all know I preached at Baptist churches? I know how to preach at a Baptist church. I do. I've preached in Episcopalian churches. I know how to preach there. I preached in jail. I know how to preach in jail. And it ain't like I preach in here. Why? I have to take what he's given me and make sure that others are not despising him because of how I have presented him. Amen. 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 I don't 
If I see someone that's a, that, you know, homosexuals, whoever, I don't go up to them and start preaching to them. They know what I believe. But it's private between me and the Lord. Now, don't make the mistake of coming up and asking me, are you right? Because I'll tell you what the Bible says. But I have to learn, and we all have to learn, that we do more harm to this truth when we cast it out in front of everybody. Because what happens after so many rejections, so many people making fun of you, so many people, all of a sudden it'll affect you. And it, could, it wouldn't have happened if you would have just kept it private. Right. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, I want to be like this woman. She said, what did she say? I forgot. If only you were like, to me like a brother who was nursed at my mother's breast. And if I found you outside. I would if I found you outside, outside. Then I could kiss you. There are things we teach in this ministry that you don't need to teach outside. That's right, Pastor. Amen. 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 There's things that we teach you don't need to teach outside. You don't. Why? They will despise him. That's right. That's right. That's right. Let me give you a perfect example. Everyone here knows that we have come to know the name Yahshua as the original name of Jesus. We can prove it. You don't want to argue with us about it, I promise you. We can prove it. You don't want to make that mistake around here and debate us because we know this scripture front to back. All right? But if I go out there to someone that the minute I say in the name of Yahshua, they think I'm talking about a false god somewhere. They don't know who that is. Then they won't even accept my prayer. Do I have a church tonight? Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. I can get up and just scream if y'all want me to, but I'm trying to help you. All right? So when you pray for somebody, do it in the name. If they don't know this name, I pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus, Yahshua the Messiah. Amen. Now what did I just do? I just kissed him. They didn't know I kissed him though. Right, right outside. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Is this okay, Brother Kendrick? we got to present him to an outside world. And we can't do it looking like a bunch of, we just, just, now in here we do look crazy. That's all right. We at home. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's, it's just like if I go to another man's church, and they're a Christian church, good Baptist, Pentecost, whatever they are, I look around, and uh, nobody's blowing the shofar. They don't have one. I, I'm going to leave my shofar sitting right where it's at. Because the minute I pull this out in a strange place, and it, it, it's going to turn some people off. You're, you're throwing something precious in front of people that don't appreciate it. So if I'm preaching in another church, if I'm in a Baptist church, I'm not fixing to get up and tell all those people they go into hell if they hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell them there's a better way. Amen? All right, I'm going to let y'all go home because I ain't doing nothing tonight. I feel like I'm just talking. I want to help you serve the Lord in private and in public. Amen. If someone tells you they're going to heaven, you know, you know they're not. You know what the heavens coming to earth. We know that. But you don't have to sit there and correct them and tell them, oh, no, you ain't got to go in no funeral where the preacher's up there telling the, the stories and the mis mistruths and stand up in the funeral and say, oh, mama, no, my granny ain't, dead, ain't in heaven. She, you ain't got to do all that. Because you're without. See, you're outside. And this woman said, I've learned how to love you inside and how to present you outside. 
Amen. That's the new song, Balance. So many people come into this message, Sister Chelsea, and they go so far that many of them have left my ministry because we don't go so far. The pendulum. They want us to go all. They want us wearing CCs. They want us wearing. Uh, they, they 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 want us to go all the way over there, and we have a balance here. Okay, that's why we don't get up here and tell you what you can't do on the Sabbath day. We have a balance in this ministry. We want to present Him outside, Amen. while we experience Him inside. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't nobody need to see a husband and wife the way they act in their bedroom. Nobody. When you walk out the door, you need to hold hands and that's about it. Why? Inside, outside. This woman has learned that new song. She is learning, and if you do see them acting like that outside, it's, it's trash. It's trashiness. Because nobody wants to, you are thin people. I do not want to see you doing that. I, I mean, does anybody know what I'm talking about? Were they like molesting each other in front of your kids? What have you done? The Bible says, uh, the, I believe the word that was used, they would despise you. Whenever we go in the world acting like we are better than other Christians, you're not winning them. They despise you. If the Father is not calling them to this truth, you cannot call them. It will not work. It just won't work. But I give you my word, there's somebody outside. The Father will send you in their path. He'll send them in your path. And when those two paths cross, truth will come. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that was one verse. Let's see if we can get one more in tonight. Speaking of that, I wanted to mention King David. King David was so in love with God that he did something that he probably shouldn't have done. And people praise him for doing it, but it really probably something he shouldn't have done. David danced before the Lord until he was completely naked. In front of all of Israel. In front of 30-fold believers, 60-fold believers, and 100-fold believers. Amen. He felt like they, they loved God as much as he did. They don't. That's right, Pastor. You have a David anointing, which is a relationship anointing with Yahweh that your brothers and sisters don't have. All you're going to do is make them despise the relationship that you do have. That's right. Amen, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Okay? David is dancing before the Lord with all his might. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, is there? As long as you're at first harvest doing it. Amen. Right? But no, David's out there in front of everybody. He thinks they all love God as much as he does. And guess what is his wife? His wife despised him. Because he brought a private relationship into the public. And tried to force that on all of Israel. And it made a mockery out of him. It left him naked. That's how you will feel when you try to force this on people. They'll undress you. You'll feel ashamed. You'll feel naked. Don't let them do it. Know what you believe and be prepared to defend it. Yes, yes. But don't be prepared to offend with it. That's right. That's right. Boy, I used to could preach like an evangelist. I preach like an old pastor now. <laughs> Boy, I used to get down. Daddy, I'm, I think it's because I turned 50. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the pastor's robe on me now. I used to have an evangelist robe. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. You will be despised from their lack of understanding. It's not that, Sister Tuttle, it's not that they're bad people. They don't understand. A lot of people don't understand me. If you don't understand something, you immediately criticize it because you don't want to feel less than because you don't understand. So you got to make them feel less than. Oh, Amen. It's just human nature. So don't put them in a position to where they don't understand. That's a word from the Lord. Don't put them in a position to where they don't understand. That's right. That's right. That's good. Do y'all know why I put three crosses up on the land? Every church has crosses. Watch this. Out on the land, we've got mostly House of Israel stuff, right? That's right. Well, we had some neighbors pull up one time. Yeah. And they're riding all through the property saying how beautiful it is. And finally they said, now what religion are y'all? I said, well, we're, we're Christians. Well, I didn't see no cross nowhere. And I, did. I said, well, let me put a cross up. Come on, Pastor. Oh, Amen. 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 Why? I don't want them to not understand and then have to feel like they don't understand and get offended because they don't understand. You don't have to try to offend people. That's right, Pastor. Amen. Now, we know the message of the cross. We believe it. That's not our main focus here. It's the coming kingdom of God. However, however, there are other people riding up on that land that don't understand. Amen. That's right. Amen. So somebody say within and without. If you'll learn how to be so in love with God privately that you offend no one publicly. Amen. Amen. Don't make them feel like they're ignorant because then they'll make you feel like you're ignorant. Amen. So what you do now, I didn't ever say be ashamed. I didn't ever say don't use the name. Don't misunderstand me tonight. I know where I'm safe. Yes, sir. That's right. And I know where he's safe. You know when you offend. Amen. I know when he's safe. That's right. I know when it's safe to kiss him. Do you follow me? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's so good. Say run so good. Run, spot, run. Amen. Because that, the, listen. Let me tell you, explain that that point. I, I could not understand anything. Amen. Now it's like, yeah. it is a run spot, run thing. Yep. It is, right there. Oh, that you was my brother. Then I'd take you in front of everybody and kiss on you. Yeah. Yeah. But if I do that, they're going to think, something, we got something weird going on. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yep. So what I'm going to do, when we get out here, you be good. I'm going to be good. Right. Me and the Lord. You don't show out, I'm not going to show out. And then as soon as I get in my prayer closet, we'll pick right back up yeah. where we left off. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said don't cast your pearls before the swine. When we're among sinners, we don't speak in tongues in front of sinners. We, you know, and look, we, we don't you know, I see people that act so holy and spiritual in front of the public that they can't even be approached or talked to. And uh, you're just making them despise Christ himself. Love people. It doesn't matter who they are. They don't have to walk in truth for you to love them. They don't have to walk in truth for you to care about them. Amen. When you're with immature believers, listen to me, please. When you're with immature believers, and that's what they are, when you get around them, you cannot tell them all the deep things you've learned. Amen. You can't, you got to leave Zoom in Zoom. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. 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 You, you got to leave Zoom and Zoom. Why? If you go out there and tell them half what you learned yesterday, first of all, guess what the first thing they're going to tell you? You're in a cult. You, you deserve it because you made it sound like it. Yes, sir. Ain't nobody with You deserve that because you made it sound like a cult. Yes, sir. That's right. 
Present it in a beautiful way. Walk it. Live it. Love it. They'll know who you are. Just by the way you treat people. They'll know who you are. Your waitress will know who you are by the way you treat her. Everybody will know how, who you are. You ain't got to go casting holy oil on people. You just got to live the life. Amen. Just live the life in front of them. Yes. Amen. Amen. And if you meet a believer that don't believe in the Sabbath day, knows nothing about the Sabbath day, then, then just, just, just love them. Just love them. Tell them, say, have good service tomorrow. Right. Have a good service where you're going. Right? Say, I hope the Lord blesses y'all real good. Now, I'm going to my church on the Sabbath, but I hope y'all have a good service. You go where you want to go. Do what you want to do. But this woman was called to walk a different way. You know, that's one thing I, I love about Brother and Sister Kendrick. I've been here 10 years now, going on. And it's no secret that mom and daddy live a very consecrated, sold out life. I mean, they from their dress to their prayer life, everything is sold out. But I promise you, I've never, ever, seen anyone come to this church that didn't look like them that they ever made feel uncomfortable in public never they're saying you know what this is our walk this is our walk and we're going to live it till we die this is our walk we may not can change you but you ain't going to change us we're going to walk the way God's called us to walk but if you don't understand it we love you like you are I've watched it my wife has told me that it's always been that way here people come they don't look like mom and daddy but they're welcome here why because you cannot take your intimate life with God you know, I'm guilty of that many times. I want my children to be as sold out to God as I am. And I, and I get angry at them. And, you know, I, I want them to be like their dad. I want them to love the Lord like I do. And all it does is cause friction between us. Sometimes I want to go beat on the door and, and jerk him out and make him live for God. but they'll just despise the Lord. So I just got to love him if he's on drugs or off of drugs, brother. I just got to love him if he's coming to church or not coming to church. We can't love our children just because they come to church and make us happy and do the right things. We have to love them because of who they are. Amen. Just the way he loves us. So I've had to repent to my children. There's been times they would ask me to help them financially, and I'd say, not till you come to church. Well, that ain't right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's me trying to get them to live for the Lord. But all it does is make them angry at the Lord. Now, if they live in my house, that's different. If you're under my roof, you go on where I go. Okay, so you parents don't take that wrong that's watching me live. If they in your house, they like a mouse. They go where you go. Okay, now listen to me. Verse number two. If I could, I would lead you. In other words, I would show you off to everybody. I'd bring you to my mother's house. What does that mean? I'd go to my old church and set them all straight. Come on, Pastor. If I could, I'd bust up in that Sunday church and show them how the Pope changed the Sabbath to Sunday if I could. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. But she's learned a new song. She's learning maturity. Yeah. I've watched people destroy this message because they have no maturity. I would bring you to my mother's house who would instruct me. In other words, my mama would correct me for the way we were acting. Yep. I would like to bring you to my mama's house, but I know me and you are so in love, we're going to cut up in front of mama. 
and she would instruct me. She would correct me. She would tell me that I'm in a cult. I'm wrong. I done gone off the deep end. I'm too far into it. She said, but if I could, I would. If I could, I would. I would cause you to drink of the wine of the juice of my pomegranate. And I'm not even going there. His left hand should be under my head. His right hand would embrace me. Did you hear what she just said? Yep. We'd get in front of mama's house and you try to. Yeah. Yep. Come on, y'all. They all wrapped up. You'd pull me in front of mama, lay a lip locker right on me. I'm talking about yeah. every kind of way. Yeah. You'd put your right hand behind my head and your left hand you, in front of mama. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Did y'all know y'all's Bible said all this? Well, it does. Yes, sir. It said, she said, if I could, I'd let you go and eat of my pomegranates. Yep. But we can't do that in front of mama. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. I'd let you, I'd just expose you to the world if I could. Huh? <laughs> Now, what does that mean? Let me break it down for you in the spiritual realm. We'd go to that old church, and I'd tell them, your name is Yahshua in front of all of them. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Come on. Well, if we go to Mama's house, if I didn't know better, yeah. we'd go to Mama's house say that. and make her hate you. Yeah, oh. yeah that's right. I made the that's right. Amen. Yeah. We've all made you it. tell your children, I'll go to the guillotines for this you did mean it and you know what what you said was true yeah. next time leave the guillotine out that's right that's right amen that's like saying I drink Kool-Aid for this truth hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah I want to teach this church how to be the perfect bride. Yes, sir. Right. In love with truth, but in love with the outside world at the same time. Hallelujah. We can do both, y'all. We can do both. And listen, our fellow brother and sister Christians are not our enemies. They are our blood. They are our family. They live in mama's house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not trying to get them saved. They're already saved. Okay. All we would like for them to do is go to Mount Bashir with us and get to know him in a more wonderful way, a more intimate way. But if they don't desire to do that, then we're not going to dance naked in front of them. Amen. That's right. Verse number four. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir not up nor awaken my love until he pleases. Now he is asleep. He's fixing to talk back to her and the daughters of Jerusalem. Verse 5. He says, Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? He says, Wait a minute. I, I don't recognize you no more. You were an immature little wild girl. And now you're trying to protect me from your mama. Who are you? Now you're walking. See, when you walk in knowledge, you destroy. But when you walk in wisdom, your knowledge won't destroy people. You walk in wisdom. He says, who are you that's come up out of the wilderness? You and I used to live in Mount Bashir. I couldn't even tame your behind out there. Who is this? That now you care and you're walking in wisdom. You're out there at Mount Bashir. You had so much knowledge I couldn't let you back in town. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. 
I brought you out there and taught you what day the Sabbath was. I went out there and taught you my name. I taught you things that mama don't know. And mama's a good woman, but she just don't know. And, 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 and I couldn't even let you come back to mama's house because you would have destroyed everybody in the house. But now I've got a bride that has learned that those people in mama's house are my friends. That's right. Yes. That's exactly right. Amen. That's right. That's exactly right. I love them as much as I love you, but they don't love me as much as you love me. Okay? Brothers and sisters, you've got to understand one day when the Jubilee comes, everybody in mama's house is going to know exactly what that bride knows. Amen? <laughs> When the Jubilee comes, every knee in mama's house is going to love him just as much as the bride did. That's right. That's right. He said, who is this? Read that verse for me. Who is this? Who is this coming up from the wilderness? Go ahead. Go ahead. The next verse? Yes. Under the apple tree, I roused you. Now, hold on. Who is this? You started out under the apple tree. Yep. That would be the cross of Mount Calvary. Yes. Yep. You started off in salvation eating those golden apples. Yep. That's right. You started off under the tree yeah. where everybody starts yep. at the foot of the cross. Yep. Who are but but that girl that was under the apple tree? But who are you? Because the girl that was washed in the blood decided to come along and be washed in the laver of water baptism and to be thrown into the lake of fire and be purified. So who are you now? Because that girl, she died. Who is this? You started under the apple tree, read. There your mother conceived you. And there you was born again, if you will, in the church. I found you. He told her, I found you in the church. Amen. But he said, you decided to come behind the lattice. Yes, sir. Your sisters didn't. That's right. You did. And that's why they look like they've always looked. But who is this? Amen. Amen. I know your last name's Connolly, but you don't look like a Connolly no more. You don't have the temper of a Connolly no more. You don't act like a Connolly no more. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? You used to be an addict under the apple tree. When you lived under Mama's house, you was bound down. But who? But you went to the wilderness. I did. I did. I sure did. Amen. And now, nobody can recognize you. He says, "We'll go to your mama's house, but they're gonna despise you." They do too. Why? Open my mouth too early. Amen. <laughs> they're gonna despise you. He said, who is this? I hope one day he can look at Shane Vaughn and say, you don't act like your daddy no more. You don't act like your mama. Who are you, son? Oh, I died under the apple tree. I died under the altar. And now I went to the wilderness with him. I opened his word. I made love to the word and the word made love to me. I got in the word and the word got in me. And now who is this? Who is this? Who is this? I don't know who it is, but it's not who it used to be. Anybody that comes to this ministry, I make you a promise. In a year from now, people will look at you and say, I don't even know who you are anymore. You'll be so emaciated in the word, so emaciated in the truth that your whole countenance will change. Everything about you will change. I'm coming to a close. Verse number five. Who is this coming up out of the wilderness? Notice what he says. Leaning upon her beloved. Sister Lori, the purpose of the wilderness 
was to teach her to lean. Oh, yes, sir. That's right. Amen. To teach her to give up. Before she went to the wilderness, Sister Callie, she was a lot like you used to be. She could do it on her own. She was a go-getter. She could make things happen. She could do it on her own. She didn't need to bow down and ask for help. Come on, Pastor. But when the Father brings us to the wilderness, He says, I'm going to leave you here until you learn to say, help me, Father. I'm leaning on you. I'm leaning on you. Just like Sister Judy Goday does. With everything she's got, she leans on the Lord. Her air conditioner broke yesterday, and she was in that hot house. I tried to get her to go to the king's cottage. She's a little stubborn, but she said, I'm playing. She fought it out and said, I'll stay here tonight. Well, we didn't know what it was going to cost to fix that air condition. We didn't know what was going to be. She leaned on the Lord. And I believe they got it taken care of, didn't they? Amen. Today? Amen. Woo, hallelujah. But it's, but it's, it's just a breaker. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a little. Hallelujah. You were leaning on the Lord. She told me that on the phone last night. She said, now, I don't have the money. I'll have to do it on payment. She said, but I know I'm going to trust in the Lord. And it was just a breaker. So we got to get to a place where we lean on the Lord. That's what you learn in the wilderness. Lean on the Lord. If prayer is not your first go-to, then you're not leaning on the Lord. Brother Von, how do I know if I'm leaning on the Lord? Did you pray? Prayer is surrender. Yes, sir. Prayer is helplessness. Prayer is helplessness. Prayer says, you know what, Lord, I could call this one and I could call that one, but I think I'm going to call you first. And I'm going to lean on the Lord. I'm going to surrender my life to you. That's what you learn to do in the wilderness. Sister Chelsea, ain't no realtor can help y'all. You got to lean on the Lord. Just lean on him. Lean on Yahshua and let him know. If you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. So I'm leaning on you. And then he'll tell you what to do. He'll tell you who to call. He'll tell you the path. Now you can't just lean on him and keep. You got to do what he says to do. Amen. 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 That's good. That's right. Praise Yah. I raised thee up under the apple tree. Verse five. There your mother brought you forth, and there she brought forth that bare thee. Now notice what he says in verse 6. Now that you've learned to lean on me, now that you're in wisdom, you're qualified now for me to set a seal on you or for me to, for me to put a ring on it. This ring is a seal. It's a symbol. It's a sign of a relationship. He said, now that you've learned to lean on me and not your other lovers, I'll put a ring on it now. The Feast of Tabernacles is when he puts a ring on it. Right now, we're just betrothed. Y'all understand? We're engaged. We're affianced right now. That's all. See? We're engaged. He hadn't put a, a ring on it yet. He puts a ring on it during the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the wedding. That's whenever we go in to consummate this marriage and bring forth children by the billions all over planet Earth. That's what happens when he sets a seal on you. In the book of Revelation, the 144,000 is a set number of believers that have earned the seal. He said, seal them in their foreheads. Seal them. Put a ring on them. I'll marry them. I will not marry them. I will love them and I will save them. But I'm only marrying the girl that learned to lean on me. Yes. 
took eight chapters for her to get a ring. It, eight chapters to get a ring on it. To earn that ring. That's why Christians get so angry at me when I preach about works. They don't understand. We don't preach works for salvation. We preach works to get that ring. Hallelujah. Because he's not marrying every Christian. He's not marrying every believer. Only those that have a ring on it. Those that left the bed of every time Dick and Harry. Every doctrine. Every religion. And sold out to this truth. Only they will get a seal put on them at that last great day of the feast of God. Hallelujah. 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 He'll put a drop of blood on you, but he ain't gonna put no ring on you. He'll save you, but he ain't gonna marry you. And that's the difference you gotta learn. Set me a seal upon your heart, for our love is strong. It's stronger than death. Our jealousy of one another is as cruel as the grave. We're so jealous of one another. We're so in love with one another that it's stronger than death. The coals are coals of fire which has a most vehement flame. We're so on fire for one another. We better put a ring on it because we're burning up. Hallelujah. 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 Many waters cannot quench our love. Listen to me. How do I know if I'm going to wear the ring? If your love can be quenched, you ain't going to wear the ring. He said to this woman, we've gotten to a place where the waters can't quench our fire. We're so on fire for we so on fire for one another that an ocean couldn't put out our fire. So for those watching me that's in and out, up one day, down the next, you still got a naked finger. Okay? Those that are in and out don't know who. Yeah, listen, you got, he ain't, he, he, you out there. To, when you get so on fire, the Bible said that in the book of Revelation that the dragon chased the bride to the wilderness and out of his mouth he began to cause a flood to come out of his mouth. Not fire. Isn't that interesting? We have a dragon with no fire but a flood of water. That flood, what comes out of the lies of the mouth of the devil? Lies. He said, our love is so strong that the ocean of lies that comes from the mouth of the devil cannot affect our love. It cannot affect who we are. It cannot dampen us. It cannot interfere with us. We're so on fire. The waters of gossip can't put it out. The waters of discouragement. Listen to me. If you can still get offended, you ain't got no ring. He said, our love so strong that no water can quench it. You going to church tonight? Well, I don't know. You ain't got no ring. You ain't got no ring. You ain't got no ring. You under that tree. Yep. Yep. You're an old apple Christian. Yep. You down there eating golden apples, getting fat. Uh, well, uh, we're going to go to Sabbath. That, that's the stupidest question. Or are we going to go? What you talking about? You're commanded to. That's right. Amen. It ain't an option. <laughs> when I ask people, are you going to the feast? I get so mad, I even, I, I even have to ask that question. You don't have a choice. Right. Who do you think you are? I said, who do you think you are that you have a choice to obey God? Amen. This bride doesn't disobey her father. She doesn't disobey her groom. He said three times a year, seven times, won't you in front of my face with the whole house of Israel? It's not a question. It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. Wherever I put my name, you be there. Amen. 
this bride, here's what this bride asked on Monday. Is it church time yet? Tuesday. Is it time? Wednesday. Is it time? Thursday. Is it time? Friday. Yes, it's time. On fire for one another. I can't wait to hear the word. I can't wait to grow. I can't wait to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. If your fire can be put out, it wasn't hot enough. Oh, yeah. That's, you know why I have a date night every Saturday night? I want that fire. hot you know why because if I don't keep it hot somebody else will do you understand me we've got to learn to keep this thing hot we got to keep this relationship on fire this girl is on fire this girl is on fire the church is that girl. We are on fire. No water can put it out. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be contemned. And now I'm going to close in verse 8. She looks at him and says, oh, I love that. But we have a problem. I'm sorry, he tells her, you and me are on fire. But I love what he says next. Verse 8, but we have a little sister who has no breast. What shall we do for our sister in the day? When she shall be spoken for. What does this mean? <laughs> he says, I know me and you are on fire. But I want to remind you, bride, why we're on fire. We're not on fire for me and you. We have a little sister with no breast. Amen. That's right. What does that mean? She's not yet mature like you. She's an immature church. We have a little sister. And our fire is for the little sister. If you'll read when he describes this woman in the Song of Solomon, he speaks of her breast being mature. But we have a little young church that's not mature. They, don't, they didn't go to Mount Bashir, but it's still our little sister and I love what he says what are we going to do for her because mine and your relationship is for them yes sir amen amen you thought that I brought you to Mount Bashir because you were going to be the only ones I saved you thought because you kept the Sabbath, you were the only one I was after? The whole time we were at Mount Bashir, your mother's house was having church on a different, they were doing, they didn't even know my name. They, they don't have breast. Right, right. Amen. But it's still our little sister. Yep. Amen. What will we do for her? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? What the Father's trying to teach you tonight is if this walk your own is not about her, if it's not about reaching and releasing the rest. Right. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. Yes, we're on fire, ain't we? Yes, but we have a little sister. What are we going to do about her? That's why it's in the eighth chapter. The eighth day. And that happens to be the eighth verse. Oh, 
He gets the little sister on the eighth day. Hallelujah. He gets that little sister on the eighth day. But what? What is he going to use to get that little sister with? That big sister with developed body, developed breast, maturity, that can go to the sister's house and teach her what she learned in Solomon's bed. What she learned in her intimate walk with God. You keep it, and then we'll get to the little sister and develop her. Hallelujah. Glory. Somebody say chapter 8, verse 8. Release the rest. You got a little sister. Release her now. Release mama's house. Release the rest of them now. It's time. He said, I've spent, I've spent seven chapters developing you. 7,000 years. Is anybody with me? Does anybody have an ear to hear? I've matured you for seven days, seven chapters, 7,000 years. Now we're done. You have a little sister. We got to go and get the rest of them. We got to release the rest. We got to set them free and teach them the laws of God. Teach them the ways of holiness. It's all about them. It was never about us. It was always about them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you love truth more than you love people, you are a Pharisee. If you love the Sabbath day more than you love people, you are a Pharisee. If you love holiness more than you love people, you're a Pharisee. Because he's not making you holy to make you anything special. He's making you holy to get that little sister and teach her. Glory. That's why some of these Sabbath keepers, these messianic people, some of them watching me now, they're real messy. They don't understand why I would go and preach at a Sunday church. Because I got a little sister in there. Yeah. I'm not going to go sit down with my little sister and do that, but I will go in there for my little sister. That's why God goes to church on Sunday. He's got little children in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, he's calling us out, but he's still got some stuck in there. Hallelujah. That's why he uses that camera. They're coming out every day. Lisa Schumer was here last weekend. Just came out from seeing these videos. One by one, they're coming out. Why wouldn't I go in a Baptist church, preach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Why wouldn't I do that? That's my sister in there. Yeah. See, the problem we had, even in the Pentecostal church growing up, we knew we lived a separated life and other Christians didn't. And I'm not going to lie to you now. Might as well tell it straight because I, I, I have a right to. I grew up in it. We had a mentality. We were saved and they were not. Right. Yeah. You can act like you don't know what I'm talking about if you want to. But honey, we believe that we had the truth. And uh, you know, if you just, you just going to miss out. That's all I can tell you. And that turned us into Pharisees. It turned us into where we walked with our nose up in the air. We turned us into everything but Christians. But when you realize this life is not about who's not going to make it. This life is about who is going to make it. He's going to get that little sister one way or the other. Hallelujah. 
what shall we do for her? And I love verse 9. Here's the answer. He said, tell your little sister. No, I'm sorry. He didn't say that. Here she is talking to Christ, her Messiah. She says, what are we going to do for her? Verse 9. If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. But if she's a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Here's what he just said. Once we reach for her, if she decides to mature into a wall, we'll build a palace of silver. We'll include her. But if she shuts the door, then she'll be sealed off and taken away. One will be left. One will be taken away. She'll be sealed off in this palace of silver. And then I love what the bride said. Hey, honey, verse 10, I am a wall. Amen. Here's what she said. And my breasts are like towers. I wish y'all had an ear to hear what she just said. You got to get past the language. You need ears to hear. I'm a wall. What does that mean? I'm solid as a rock. I don't crumble when somebody hurts my feelings. I don't crumble when somebody makes fun of me. I don't crumble when things get hard. I'm a wall and my breasts are big as you know what. I've got maturity. I can feed the hungry. I can help those that don't have what I have. She said, I got a dolly anointing. That's what she said. I can give all you need me to give to my sister. I'm a wall. I'm a wall. I choose to stand where you planted me. Anything that can be shaken will be. But if you said I'm a wall, Sister Deb Tuttle, there are some people, honey, come to the piano so I shut up. Hallelujah. Because I'm feeling my help now. There's some people you don't know if they're going to be here next service or the next or if they're tired, they're going to be. You, you, they're not walls. They like little reeds shaking in the wind. But when God calls you to this truth, honey, you become a wall and you become a double D anointing. Oh, yes, you do. You get a triple D anointing. You start walking in the power of maturity. You start walking in the authority of the word of God. God's trying to build a wall. God's trying to create an impenetrable wall that no devil in hell can tear it down. No demon can destroy it. No offense. 